Hello, this is our Asa Palmatum Shiraz. Now this tree has been in the ground for about five years. It was only 18 inches tall and about 12 inches wide when it was planted in the ground in that spot there, just to the right, about eight foot behind. But it was a little bit too close to the, the uh, conitifolium. So it was dug out about two weeks ago root pruned, root washed and put it in this pot here with some general compost and chip bark and some mercosial root and powder sprinkled on the root bar so I'm just going to thin the tree out a little bit prune back some of those longer branches and just thin it out just to help the tree recover a little bit I've noticed it's picked up a little bit of dye back over the winter possibly a little bit since it's repot so that's easily spotted and easily pruned off so that's a good place to start with go around the tree re removing all this little bits of dye back it just gets you warmed up ready for your pruning now this tree's got some good layering shape going on which I like There is like a horizontal sort of outstretched arm sort of thing. That's the natural shape of the tree, so we just try to remove some of those branches that are straight up or curved downwards and just to emphasize the horizontal platform sort of thing with it. Now I've got a piece of paper here showing basically the, the tree's natural shape. Obviously the main trunk goes off almost horizontal up here. Three horizontal branches to the right and two lower down on this side. So the tree's got a, a very interesting shape going on. It's just a matter of thin thinning away some of those messy branches and cross branches, parallel branches. So I'm going to make a start on that there now. And I'll show you, I'll just show you a few problematic branches first. Obviously at the top of the tree here we have two cross branches and two parallel branches. So which one to take out? Well, because we're going for the, I'm going for that horizontal look to the tree. This curved one, which is curved down. It's, it's an upright tree. It's not a dissector, but weeping tree. So we can take out that branch there. And that gives her a horizontal one cover to the front. Also, I could be tempted to take out this one, which is growing higher, and possibly this one as well, and possibly this one. But I'll do that the more I get it to prune in the shape of it uh, very shortly. Um, the more branches that are just literally more horizontal, the more the look will be uh, defined. Right, there's a branch around the back which is a, an eyesore. If you can spot it, yep, you've spotted it. That one at the back, the weeping one again. Again, it's an upright tree and that branch is just completely weeping over so we pulled it back to about half an inch and obviously the die back I'm going to do the die back first once I turn the tablet off it's very hard to, to hold pulling is great it's, it's very therapeutic you just literally take your time and it, it can be overwhelmed when you come to do a tree because especially if you haven't done a great deal of pruning it's like where do you start 
but honestly if you just literally go around the whole tree looking for the little bits of die back these, these little bits here were what was pruned last year or the year before when I really thinned the tree out now it's, it's easy to hold with two hands so like here for instance this has died back, there's a little bit of tip there and because I've thinned the tree out um, to reduce some of the, the body of the tree to help it recover normally I'd take it about here but I'm just going to take it a little bit further which thins the tree out a little bit so once you take out all this dead, dead wood tree immediately looks better because it hasn't got these little bits which are, are really standard out to you this tree really had a, a good thinning out last year the year before it was very very bushy I don't think I'd ever really pruned it but um, the last couple of years it's been struggling a little bit because it's had a a problem with horse chestnut skill bugs those little white furry bits that you'll see on the trunk there in the branches now the iconic folium next to it again was really badly affected with it and I think this tree here has, has been weakened a little bit it's been thinner branches uh, with the amount of leaves that the tree's had the last couple of years. Um, it just looked weak and struggling. There's plenty of buds on it there at the moment. But um, it was really badly affected. And you know, every day I'd wash or wipe the horse chestnut skill bugs off. And, it would be thick the next day it was it was unbelievable so it's in a pot now and then i'm gonna see how it gets on give it a good thin out put it in its position which is about eight foot behind just to the left there it's going to get a little bit more sun over the fence this year and i'm going to see how it does but i'll make an update uh, very shortly with the progress of how I'm getting on it's about the 23rd of March today so uh, early spring pruning here